coming back into the shrine room from the walking. Again, noticing the the mood of the mind, feelings of the body. Take the first couple of minutes of a sitting meditation period just to to check how is it now? How is the body? How is the mind? And before we try to pick up any kind of meditation object, or direct the mind in a particular way, it always helps just to take this moment to review, to look and to see what's the material that we're working with. How is the body being held? What is the mood of the mind? Again, to recollect there's no right or wrong mood to be experiencing. Whether the mind is sad and uh, void of energy, whether the mind is excited, agitated, whether it's feeling busy or feeling quiet, there's no right or wrong place to be starting from. Just notice, oh, this is how it is now, this is what we're working with. Similarly with the body, comfort or discomfort, feelings of heat or weight, here it is. This is how the body feels. Then from that starting point, appreciating what it is that we're working with, then we can help steer the body, the mind, towards the integration of, of alertness, energy, <coughs> and also relaxation. the body is tense and agitated, then we need to emphasize the aspect of relaxation. If the body is heavy and listless, then we need to emphasize the aspect of, of energy, sitting in an upright, attentive way. We ourselves have to notice what it is that is needed, that's appropriate, each moment. No one else can tell us. After a few moments of checking, reviewing the, the mood and the, the body and posture, and consciously bring the attention to the, the feeling of the breath. Pick that up in a deliberate, conscious way. Set the, the sensations of the breathing at the very center of attention. Resolving that for the next half hour or so, this is the only thing that we're interested in. Everything else, ideas of past or future, we can lay aside. Just let the breath be the, the object that we decide upon to be the only thing that we're concerned with. And then, as other things arise, the attention distracted by sounds or feelings, ideas, memories, gently, firmly, let go. Release them, relinquish them. Let the attention come back to the breath again. Very simple. 
very direct. Working with the mind in a compassionate, kindly, attentive way. Remember that it's not important how many times the the attention drifts away. This is not a a, uh, an exam with a pass mark. In a way, it's more of an exercise in learning how to fail beautifully, how to fail perfectly, to notice that that drift. The attention has wandered, drifted from this present reality. To notice that, and gently and firmly gather the attention back in again. So we're learning the art of uh, waking up, noticing distraction, 
waking up to that, responding by letting go, regardless of what it is that the attention has snagged onto, to let go, to come back to this present reality. The body here, the rhythm of the breath. And as the mind comes back to this reality, notice how this feels. And there's a letting go of distraction and a waking up. How is it? How does this feel?
So we have the um, so the <coughs> ending of this period of uh, formal meditation, and one of the things that I always like to emphasize is, like you say, when the bell rings, um, this is not uh, indicating that the meditation is stopping; it's just changing mode. And uh, because this is very commonly how our mind works, okay, we will sit down, close our eyes. Now the meditation begins. Ding! The bell rings. We say the meditation is ending, but it's far more helpful for us to consider that the meditation just continues the whole time, but just is sometimes formal and sometimes informal. And so, um, uh, what we're we're doing with this this time together is uh, developing a continuity of attention, so that we're uh, learning to to watch the flow of feelings and moods, perceptions as uh, they play themselves out during the course of the day. And so I would like encourage that attitude, even though, um, you know, that we obviously, um, you know, we just the way we use the language, like of coming into the hall for the meditation, just to sort of shift your your way of, of naming things and holding things, so that you're seeing that uh, uh, the uh, the meditation continues. As uh, Ajahn Chah, our teacher, would say, you know, that you can suffer in any posture. You know. <laughs> It's not like uh, you know. As soon as you leave the the, the Dharma hall, that uh, all your all your suffering ceases. <laughs> it, it, it kind of carries uh, carries along with us wherever we go. Okay, wherever you go, there it is. <laughs> um, so, in this respect, uh, it can help us enormously just to be developing an ongoing uh, attention, flowing uh, uh, so with the. Uh, uh, the perceptions that we experience, that the quality of, of uh, attention and mindfulness uh, goes along with that. And in particular, picking up on the, the theme for this retreat and um, some of the things I was addressing last night, um, one of the, the helpful things to bring to mind is to see if you can notice the difference between feeling and uh, and wanting. So uh, in this respect, say like the weather is very hot, at least to my perception. Some of you might be thinking, hot? This is nothing. <laughs> I was just in Thailand a couple of weeks ago, so actually, compared to there, <laughs> this, this is not that hot. <laughs> no mosquitoes, but uh, here, yeah, but... Um, uh, so that, uh, uh, see if you can, if you're sitting in here and thinking, oh, it's really hot. Um, I wish I was outside in the fresh air. I wish I was in a place that was cooler. Where can I find a fan? Or <laughs> and so... Uh, to be able to to recognize, oh, this is the mind wanting, and uh, the mind moving towards, uh, I don't want this, I want that, and to to be able to recognize, oh, yeah, the mind is moving into craving, but if we uh, see that uh, uh, actually what is present is this feeling of of heat, it's the sensation, uh, the vedana, the simple feeling of of temperature, and uh, that feeling. Um, brings with it, you know, say, maybe a sense of, of dislike, like, say, I don't like this heat, or maybe some of you um, um, from a, um, uh, an Asian background, you know, more conditioned to think, ah, at last, <laughs> England, it's comfortable, finally, yeah. So whether there, <clears throat> there's like or dislike, uh, then to be able to, well, to bring mindfulness to how the, the attitude is formed in relationship to that. Like yesterday evening I, I was saying how the whole process of freeing the heart depends upon attitude, the attitude that we bring. So to be able to recognize, oh, this is a feeling of liking, or this is a feeling of disliking. And to, to recognize if, it's, uh, if that feeling is just appreciated for what it is, this is just a feeling of liking. It's like this. Or well, this is the feeling of disliking. It's like this. Then there's a spaciousness there. There's, a, there's an ease. Even though it might be disliking, we can be at peace with that feeling. It's just here. As soon as we cross that bridge, as soon as the mind says, yeah, but I don't want this and it shouldn't be this way, and <laughs> starts to negotiate and manipulate and, and uh, uh, say, get lost in how it ought to be or how we want it to be, then uh, then again, looking at that to see, how, oh, when the mind moves in towards craving, how much that brings stress and tension in the heart and seeing that that's something that the mind is adding to the moment. 
Similarly, if it's liking, like, oh, this is great, this is so wonderful, I hope it's going to be like this all week. That mind, mind wanting to, to own and to hold, to keep that experience. Again, noticing, oh, this is the mind attaching to liking. And again, seeing, even though it's something that you like, <laughs> the feeling of stress and, and tension and, and the, the kind of confinement that comes with that. And seeing how, if we can just let go of that that attachment, that kind of uh, craving, and to be with simply the feeling of liking, recognize ah, oh, that too is, is this is just liking. I don't have to want more of it. I don't have to own it or keep it. It's just liking, and it feels like this. So um, this is a, a simple theme to start exploring. I would encourage this for today, just to to see if you can uh, notice the difference between. You know, liking and wanting, or disliking and not wanting, and to, and in noticing the the difference, and to see uh, to take that that uh, that noticing when you recognize that, to take that as a uh, an encouragement or as a signal. Okay, <laughs> if there's there's, there's wanting, uh, uh, then to respond to that by letting go and seeing. Oh, can I just be with with uh, with liking? Uh, and just leave it at that. And how is that? Or if there's disliking, not wanting, can I just simply be with this disliking, not wanting? Simply be be uh, attentive to that, and then notice what's the difference. How does that sit in the heart when we're simply with disliking? This is the feeling of not wanting this or not liking this, this sensation. And uh, begin very directly and simply to to notice the those. Uh, Contrasting qualities. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, that's your task for today. <laughs>